Welcome back to another episode of the Figures Tech Talk. This is a very special episode. So this will be the first episode where we've introduced a guest. And before I jump into introducing him, I did want to say that this is very historical for us. It is Black History Month. So that's pretty cool um, for us to kind of share our story, talk about the history that we're working on and the history we're making. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest, Mr. Tavion Payton. I'd like to say anything? Uh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Um, me and Tay go way back, by the way. Um, I'm sure you guys know Tay. If you don't know Tay uh, on Twitter, you can follow him. Uh, Instagram as well, Tay on Tech uh, dot io. Uh, and he's been making a lot of noise in technology, especially uh, for people of color, for minorities, and really anybody who's looking to make an entrance into technology. Uh, so I kind of wanted to start there, man. Like, what's your story, and you know, what do you want to share with people? What do you want them to know about your your journey in tech? <clears throat> Uh, so my journey uh, was very unique. Um, originally me going to college, um, I didn't really know I wanted to do technology. Um, I like to tell people all the time. My first, I think I changed my degree about three times before I actually decided what <laughs> I wanted to do. Um, my first degree or the first degree that I chose that I wanted to go for was business marketing. Um, after that, I thought I wanted to do law <laughs> and then I thought I wanted to do political science, but it was way too much reading. It was way too much. And um, just from high school, I had always been good with technology. Um, I was always the guy in high school that was fixing laptops, jailbreaking iPhones. I was always taking apart all these different things. And I was just thinking, like, why am I trying to just steer away from me going into technology? Um, for also another thing as well, too, I didn't really know anything about the tech, um, the tech industry until I got to my sophomore year of college as well, too. So... I didn't really just understand um, all the different um, fields that were in that particular um, industry. So I really didn't know um, until my sophomore year. And when I finally got introduced to it, um, I was talking to one of my professors and he just kind of brought up that, hey, you know, you can, you can get paid to hack. And I was like, bro, you lying. <laughs> like I was straight up like, bro, you lying. There's no way they're paying people to get like to hack when I'm seeing all this stuff on the news with people going right. to jail but trying to hack and stuff. And so um, I just really found out about it and I just fell in love. And ever since then, I've been into the tech industry. So it's going on seven years now that I've been working to the tech industry in the corp corporate America. So not only just like, oh, I've been practicing on my own, but I've actually been in corporate America for about seven plus years now. Wow. Yeah, that's that's amazing, man. Go, like if I take us back a little bit too, I mean, <laughs> When we first became, um, when we first met each other, we met we met <laughs> on Twitter, by the way. So um, I had just moved to our college town, Denton, Texas, uh, at, at the University of North Texas, and I was looking for a roommate. And so I came across him on Twitter, and you know, our first conversation, we jumped right into technology. Like I don't think it took maybe two DMs for us to be go from you know, are you looking for a roommate to technology. And um, when we did become roommates, you know, like I, um, I learned very quickly just how far ahead he was of everybody else. And, um, you know, I saw him working contract jobs while he's still in college, like working for working in corporate America, um, contracting. What was it? Uh, uh, Southwest or? Yes. Yeah, Southwest. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. Southwest Airlines uh, was the first the first time I had met him. He was working there as a contractor. And, um, you know, that really inspired me, too, because I had been in technology since the fourth grade. But I didn't have any guidance into like corporate or guidance into getting a job in technology. You know, I was kind of just doing it in passing and kind of trying to figure myself out in college, um, trying to figure out, you know, what would be the best path for me. Similar to him thinking of things like poli sci or, you know, just anything that I might have been interested in. But, you know, many people can relate when you go to college. You don't truly you may not truly know what you want to do. And um, but he seemed to be somebody that I, f I felt like had a much better idea than most people, especially the people that look like us, because, mm -hmm. you know, most people who look like us, young, black uh, men or women. Um, it, it's like a lot of us are coming into college first generation mm -hmm. or, um, you know, haven't worked in corporate America. Maybe we've tried to run our own our parents or grandparents, maybe ran their own businesses or we don't even know what our people did past our parents and grandparents. So. I mean, it was just really um, special to have came across Tay and figure out the things he was doing. But like, what do you think 
um, separated you from the rest because there weren't there weren't a lot of people who looked like mm-hmm. you that were doing the things that you were doing. So what do you think made the difference in you finding those jobs so early in your career? Okay, yeah, that's actually a pretty easy question. Uh, I think the real like the thing that really separated me um, once I had like those two major changes. And when I actually kind of like found something that I really enjoyed, like I was locked in, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I also put the work in to actually do that as well too. Mm. So I know a lot of times people always kind of wonder like, what's the secret to something or how can you do this? It's really just consistency when it's all said and done. Like Mm. if you say you want to do something, actually do it. And Mm. that, that really what it was for the most part. I think that's what separated me for, um, for the most part. Like after I made those two career, uh, those two degree changes, um, once I kind of found um, the technology industry and I just really kind of locked in on it and I was just like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. So it wasn't really no like super secrets or anything like that. It was just me putting in the work to do it. What did, what did you do to land your first like real job opportunity? Uh, so this is actually crazy. So like uh, the contract or the actual internship? Um, let's start with the contract. Okay. So the contract was wild. <laughs> so at this time, um, I was actually looking for internships. I was working at Geek Squad. I was, um, ARA advanced repair agent. I was a person back there that fixed the computers and all that stuff. And so one of the recruiters actually came in, he was getting his laptop fixed. And, um, I was just pretty much like explaining to him, like what was going on with his computer. I was just pre- pretty much just breaking everything down and how I was able to translate it to him. And, uh, actually kind of explained it to him mm-hmm. as someone that's not really tech savvy. He was like, oh, man, like, how old are you? I told him, I think I was like 19 at the time or something like that. And so I was like, I mean, are you are you looking like to like get a job or internship mm-hmm. or, you know, anything that you can just try to get some experience into? I was like, yeah, because at the time I used to always keep resumes in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had a resume in my car. And I was like, Ashley, um, I can go grab my resume right now at the car. I have it and I can bring it back to you. I, like, oh, I love that. So we went outside, I gave it to him. We just started talking. He was like, Hey, you're gonna hear back from me. Um, so like a couple of days later, he was like, Hey, um, I showed my res- I mean I showed your resume to the hiring manager. He really loved you. He wanted to interview you. Got interviewed and like a week or two later, I got the job and I quit Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that like those types of personal relationships that you build in the moment have been more um successful with finding jobs than just applying to jobs or yeah. You think they both kind of play hand in hand or um I think for us particularly in the tech industry, um, I would it's in or even just in like period, it's all about like who you know and what I mean it's not it's who you know and like it's who it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's, it's who you know. And um so that and that's honestly how all of my careers or all of my jobs came about. Um like my very first internship, um I actually took a pay cut. Uh it's considered a pay cut, but yeah. I took a lower paying job because the person that I was going to be working up under, mm-hmm. he was well known in the security industry. He was well known in Dallas and he just had so much pull. And like literally after um, I ended up having an internship, every internship that I had received after that was due to him or due some type of networking through him. Wow. And so I can honestly say networking is probably the best route to go, especially when you're making career transitions or even just trying to enter into, enter into the industry. Because I know for LinkedIn, like that's what I always tell people, go to LinkedIn, especially if you're in the tech industry. Sure. It's a gold mine. And um, like every job, every job I receive, a full-time job, I've received it through LinkedIn. I haven't had to apply to one job. For wow. the most part. So yeah. most of the jobs, they come directly to me. Hey, you looking for a job? Sure, yeah. why not? <laughs> and, and I feel like that's the way, um, I mean, a, a part of me feels like we kind of have to shift the culture a little bit because I do feel like there's so many people with skill sets, mm-hmm. but because they lack um, maybe interpersonal skills mm-hmm. or they lack, um, you know, just general knowledge on how to network, mm-hmm. networking strategies and things like that, um, their talent may, if like if it was solely based on talent, they might be higher in these hiring pools, mm-hmm. but because there's other people who are getting referred and typically those that are getting referred, I'm not going to say everybody, but mm-hmm. statistically speaking, you know, it's not our minorities. It's not yeah. our underserved people. It's, you know, people from um, yeah. other demographics where they're represented. So like when I see those things, I'm like, I do want to help shift that culture, but I also want to like, like kind of get into, or like stuff that we talked about, yeah. which is like, how do you get to where these recruiters are finding the talent? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you get it to where, you know, you're not having to necessarily just put yourself out there as much as you're like, like once you're out there, it's just coming to you. Mm-hmm. Like, like those are some of the things that I, that, um, that I know, like we've talked about, 
uh, that I that I think are going to be very vital in the future. Mm-hmm. But like like where we stand today, it really it truly is about you know who you know and not as much about what you know. And that's kind of sometimes scary too because you know that that I think is what kind of kills some people's momentum when they're mm-hmm. trying to find jobs. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, dang, you know, I I know all these skills. I spent all this money going to boot camps, going to um, different um, conferences. I wouldn't say conferences. You go to a conference, you're going to network. Yeah, but that's the thing. <laughs> I wouldn't you, say conferences. Get, yeah, conferences but like certifications and, and training and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so many people spend so much time trying to perfect their craft, but they're still struggling to find jobs in the market. So my thing about that as well, too, when it comes to just like even certifications or boot camps or even just that, I think the real problem that people typically have, especially when it comes to certifications, I don't even try to learn information. They just want to get something under the belt and say, hey, I did this or right. hey, I've, I've completed this. I've done that. Right. Like you can go to these boot camps all you want. You can take all the certifications you want to take. But if you don't necessarily understand that information, then it was pretty much pointless for you even to do that. Right. And so a lot of times whenever people are trying to get into the industry and they are trying to make that, tra- that transition to actually try to get into you know the jobs, most of the time it's the resumes. Like right. they don't even know like, how to actually properly format their resumes. They don't know how to like articulate um, what boot camp they went to or what certification or what training they went to. My thing is, if you did a certification, most likely you did some type of training, whether it was self-paced or wherever it is, you need to know how to like put that training or mm-hmm. put that those that information or those labs that you put onto your um on your resume. Mm-hmm. I say for instance, um a certification and training you may do for that. You can do that for like, you know, other learning or projects or whatever it was that you was doing while you was training. You need to be able to articulate that because when most time when people are applying to these jobs and they're trying to make a career transition, like say, for instance, if they were a retail manager, Mm -hmm. their resume follows like retail manager, uh, manager, customer service. And they just say they have certification, certification, security plus. Yeah. If I'm a recruiter. This doesn't do right. Well, this, right. It doesn't this speak doesn't, to what I'm looking for. Yeah, this, I'm not looking for that. Yeah, and so that's I think that's really the problem. Whenever they are spending this money to do this, they're not properly um, articulating or showing on a resume that they actually have the skill set to do that. Because people actually be surprised about the um, the jobs that are done right now that actually transfer over to being in the tech field. So, for those that are putting together your resume, and you're looking to get into a field, let's just let's only focus on technology. Mm-hmm. You really have to focus on two things. You have to focus on substance. When I say substance, I mean like what is it that's going to fit the criteria for the type of job you're applying to. So the substance of your resume should reflect what type of job you're actually going to apply to. But the second thing you have to be able to focus on is what I call information architecture. And it's like, how do you actually put it together? Like, how do you take the experience that you have gained and like put it put it together, um, put the information together to where, you know, somebody who's going to actually read this is going to be able to pick up on your actual experience. So you take the substance, you put it together in a way where, um, you know, it's actually going to sell you um, in a sense. So, you know, also think of like, if you have experience somewhere, how does that, I think you actually had a post about this on the Mm -hmm. Get Me In Tech uh, uh, page, the Mm -hmm. Instagram page, where it talks about transferable skills. Like a lot of people, they'll pick up on like many skills that could be transferred from one discipline to another, but they don't know that they could use it. So it's like you use the retail manager example mm-hmm. um, they, and there's somebody who's looking to transition into technology, mm-hmm. <clears throat> into technology. They're not always fully aware that they could actually transfer some of those skills they picked up as a manager okay. into IT or another tech field where they might also end up being a manager just in a different discipline. Project manager. Correct. You know, just like small <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and then you brought up like certification. So how do you like take what you've learned? Like how do you actually put that on paper besides just saying, here's the certification? You know, you can actually um, put think terms in there where it's like somebody's going to pick up. Okay, mm. this person fully understands, uh, you said security plus, so I'm going to say like networking fundamentals. Mm. Or this person clearly understands how to do security audits. You know, like, how can you put in this certification, you put it on your resume, like, these are the things that I learned, Mm -hmm. that way it actually speaks more to your um, actual skill set, and they're not having to guess or wonder, you know, what skill do you actually possess versus you just saying you have a cert. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially if, like, your your career experience isn't really as much relatable to IT, other than, like, if, again, the retail manager example, Mm -hmm. the management experience, but, like, if you don't have, like, those hard skills, 
you know, what other areas can you use them? And it's going to be those things, like you mentioned, the boot camps, the certs and like projects that you might have done. So I think it's good that you call those things out because not a lot of people are aware of like how to articulate the skills that they already have. Yeah, and I feel like that's another thing that like a lot of boot camps today end up doing as well, too. Um, they teach you skills that you need to do it or, you know, they try to teach you skills, but they don't try to articulate and show you how, you know, to actually put that on your resume. So it's just like, all right, well, you took the boot camp. That's it. OK, what about my resume? Right. Like I took this. Like, how am I supposed to market myself now? Right. I don't really show you that. Some right. do, but for the most part, a lot of them don't. And and we can even take that back to college. Like, yeah, when we were in college. <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, I didn't learn how to perfect a resume from a college um, career center. They, they, I mean, what they did was <laughs> here's a template, pretty much fill it out and you're good to go. Take yeah. this to a career fair. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think that's what so many people are experiencing is like they're relying on the resources that they're paying for mm -hmm. to basically supplement them with what they need to get, a, a, you know, a, a foot ahead in their careers. Mm -hmm. When in reality, it's just, I mean... I didn't have that experience at my college. I've, I've spoken with other yeah, people, other yeah. colleges who have also had a similar experience as mine as well. So it's just like, I think it's good. Um, I think it's good for us to at least speak on these things because mm -hmm. I know that people are experiencing um, exactly what we might've went through at a point in time in our early yeah. career. That's another myth too that um, I used to always hear about resumes, especially, at least it doesn't apply to the tech industry. They were like, oh, make sure your resume is only one page long. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how am I supposed to like show off all the dope stuff I'm done? I can only do like one page. One page. Like I, I, I've done a lot of stuff. So yeah. you can't keep me limited to one page. I mean, now my resume is two pages, but yeah, that, that's also a myth too, as far as the tech industry. Do you, you think it, do you think it also depends on like how much experience you have and what's relevant to the actual position? Yeah, definitely. So I have multiple resumes, right? right. <laughs> so I have resumes and I'm just like primarily only looking for like security engineer spots or maybe I'm looking for an incident response engineer or senior security engineer. So I have different uh, resumes based on like what type of job I'm looking right. for. Tailoring I mean, them to the actual type of job. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah, I'm kind of, um, I'm just slightly different. So I have five years of career experience. I typically keep keep mine on one, but I also make sure just like you, I, yeah. I tailor them. So I don't like, if if I'm applying for like a product management position, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to keep my experience strictly to product. If mm -hmm. I'm applying to a UX position, same thing. I'm going to only include my UX experience. So I do know some people though, like in your case mm -hmm. where you've been working in cybersecurity for um, so many years, even though the roles might change, you probably have mm -hmm. a ton of experience that even though this might not be like a cybersecurity um, um, engineering role, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I still can speak on things that it might relate to. And that experience should be on my resume. Yeah, no, that's and that's the thing about when it comes to security engineering, because when it comes to security engineering, like there are so many different disciplines that I have to know. Like I have mm -hmm. to know the next administration, sometimes like administration, data engineering, vulnerability management, answer response. Like right. it's just all these disciplines mm -hmm. And as a security engineer, they expect you to be able to deal with all these different things. Like, we don't want you just doing this. You're doing this, 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 and that. Because at the end of the day, I'm the senior security engineer. So I should be able to secure any and all of these different type right. of um, technologies. So right. that's also another reason why my resume is also two pages long. Because maybe this one particular job, I was doing a lot of Linux administration. And this job right here, I was doing pen testing. And so when they see me having all that collective experience, they're like, oh, we can use we can definitely use him for something or we can probably even consider him for a position that he didn't even apply for. So mm -hmm. that's also kind of like and that's happened to me a couple of times, actually. So, well, tell, tell us about um, I, I kind of want to also hear you tell your story. Um, just kind of shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell your story about your business. Um, get me in tech. I want I want mm -hmm. I want people to know what you're doing <laughs> and what your goals are. Maybe right. even how it came about. OK, um, so get me in tech actually came. By like an accident like <laughs> i always try to, i always tell people i literally like accidentally got into entrepreneurship i never really cared for it yeah like i had always said i'm cool i make six figures in tech i don't have to do anything else right and so um how it came um i was always on twitter um i was always sharing like my experiences i was just pretty much sharing my tech journey i'm um, sharing my like financial journey of like you know me learning financial literacy me investing we just learn all these different cool things about money and about the tech industry. Mm -hmm. And um, every time, like, I talked about either tech or finance, my page would just, like, blow up. And so it got to the point, like, I just kind of make these long threads just detailing, like, hey, this is kind of why I got into the tech industry. Or, 
hey, this is how I got my first certification or just pretty much just telling people everything that I went through and something I noticed. And I was always sharing my journeys and like some of the problems and like the trials and tribulations that I faced when I was going through that journey. A lot of more people were saying, oh, I'm dealing with the same thing. And in my head, I'm like, dang, I overcame it. And this is how I did it. And by me sharing like all this information, sharing all everything that I did or how I overcame certain obstacles um, in my journey, I was like, dang, like people really hitting me up about it. And yeah. like it got to the point, bro. Yeah, even now, like my DMs is crazy. Like I was getting like 20, 30 DMs a day. Hey, I'm trying to get into the tech industry. Do you think you could help me out? Or hey, like I'm into I want to get into cybersecurity. What's some skills that can help me out? What and at this point, like it got so bad that I literally could not like I couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. So I ended up coming up with the name Tay on Tech. I don't even know how I came up with that name. It was just like really <laughs> catchy. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, this is what, what I'm going to do. Oh. When was this? 2019. Okay. Okay. Yep. 2019, mm-hmm. 2020, 20, uh, 2019, I believe. That's when I, so 2019, 2018, 2019 is when I actually started documenting everything. Mm-hmm. But 2020 is when like the tail tech thing came around mm-hmm. or 2019 was one of them. So anyways, um, I saw, I was like, you know what? I'm going to create a blog. I'm just going to like most, like the frequently asked questions I get, I'm going to write a blog about it and I'm just going to post it yeah. and do it like that. Even though I was still posting all these blogs, people still DM me, ask me the same exact questions. So I'm just like, all right, bro. Like, <laughs> I, like at this point, I'm like, all right, I, I have to monetize my time. Like, I'm, <laughs> I've always been the type of person I'm against. Like, I believe information should be be free, but my time shouldn't. Right, right, right. So right, right. it was like at that point, it was just like, man, like this is going crazy. So I started like, all right, cool. I'm gonna do consultation calls. I was, I think I was charging like seventy five dollars for an hour, seventy five to hundred dollars per hour. And I was getting like 30 consultations call a month. And I'm just like, like, and I can't, and I realized like everybody keep asking the same as that question. And then as I just started having the consultation calls, I started seeing people get into the tech industry. I just started seeing people get results and actually do that. So I was like, dang, like I'm really, I'm kind of good at this. Like I never really seen myself as a career coach or anything like that. I was just pretty much being me and giving out free information. And so like my father's literally was like, bro, you need to create like a program to help people get into the tech industry and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I've always been against courses and stuff like that. I'm like, man, I'm not doing that. Right. But then it's just like, people like literally like, nah, bro, do this, dude. Like they ask me to do it. So I'm just like, I'm going to do it. And so I was just sitting there chilling, just trying to think of a name of a company. I'm just sitting there like this thinking, and like all of a sudden get me in tech. Like it was, it's so catchy. <laughs> like, Oh, I want to get in tech. Get me in tech. So I was like, yeah. all right, cool. I'm going to name it. Get me in tech. So I had dropped the program. Uh, I think last April, and uh, it's been about, what, eight, nine months, mm-hmm. probably. Wow. And I think I got about 2,000 students in wow. right now. And that's, so that's I've amazing. Been people getting jobs. I've been helping people get certified. Yeah. I've been doing all a lot of stuff. And crazy thing about it, I don't even really just like post like, oh, yeah, I did this. this, this. Yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm going to start. But yeah. Yeah. Like, it's been a lot of people, even now. Like, I had, like, today I was in a Discord. People was like, oh, yeah, I just got certified. I just did this. I'm like, oh, shit, dope. Like, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. So, yeah, mind you too, guys, like um leading up to this, so when he first started like Tay on Tech, we used to be roommates. Yeah. So he I mean, I remember we used to be up sometimes, man, two, three, four in the morning, <laughs> um, in the middle of the pandemic, trying to build brands, yeah. trying to build a, a business. Um, you know, he like he said, Tay on Tech kind of started off as, you know, solo um um sole proprietor kind of route. He was consulting, helping people out, and you know, from there. He took all of that hard time and energy and turned that into something even more valuable. You know, having 2000 plus course members is amazing. Um, I also want to know, like, what are your demographics looking like? Um, so my demographic is mostly minority men and women. So um, I think right now could be lying, but don't don't take this. Take it with a grain. So I think about because I was just looking at analytics, I think about 15 or 16 percent of the people that's enrolled in my course or black women. Wow. For the most part. And everything else black. So that's 15 or 16? 15, 15 to 16% 15 of women in my uh-huh. course enrolled are women. Um, okay. Yep. And then that's also another thing because like, um, I also was like something that I did like last Mother's Day. Um, just like something for single moms and things like that. Cause I know like the tech industry, it really can change your life and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I think last year, I think I gave about like 75 free spots for like single moms on Mother's Day. I was just like, hey, if you're a single mom, you want to like enroll in somebody, give me a tech course, mm-hmm. send me an email, send me a DM, and I enroll you. And I enrolled like 75, 80 people in there. Wow. Yeah. Dang. 
That's amazing. Congrats, man. So I also want to be able to tell um, a bit more of our story and our journey now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you gave them your backstory. If you've kept up with the series this far, um, you've heard some of my backstory and figures. Uh, and, you know, I just want people to know kind of where we are and some of the things that we've come up with. But before I share that, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, leave comments. Um, you know, let us know how we can improve or like what more stories you might want to hear from us because we will be back. Uh, with Tavion uh, on the show. So uh, with, without further ado, you know, I just want to uh, be able to just share that. Like, like we've both started our businesses, mm-hmm. but we're now into a partnership. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've actually uh, started our partnership uh, sometime last year, I do believe, mm-hmm. 2021, I want to yeah. say, like early early to mid-2021, somewhere around there. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're definitely carrying forward and moving in a much more uh, modern direction, doing a lot more to, uh, you know, build <laughs> a lot of buildings <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot <laughs> yeah yeah so um you know just you want to kind of share some of the partnership stuff that we have going on and, mm-hmm. and things like that Abby. yeah so man it's honestly a lot um because me and both again uh, we kind of both started running or trying to build our business in the pandemic and um he's always been pretty much good at resumes he's done my resume plenty of time career services and i was always kind of person like I was really hand like I knew about resumes and things like that, but I was just really hands off, and it's just something I did not want to deal with versus mm-hmm. him. Like he and think about like resumes, he's also kind of bringing in like a UX UI design type of thing, also with important information on resumes. Mm-hmm. I've actually had a lot of hiring managers say, "Oh my god, like I love your resume, like and all that <laughs> stuff like that." So yeah, yep. <laughs> like over time, like I know with him, like even just like the conversations we always have, like. At a time, um, like over the year and things like that, like um, business kind of started going very well for me. Um, started building capital and able to ask them for me to es- explore different business ventures and things like that. But the thing about that was I just really kind of lacked creativity mm. uh, when it came to that portion of thing. Um, really solid when it comes to technical stuff. But he also has a computer, you know, you had a computer science background, then mm. you had the technical writing background, then a product background. I'm just like, all right, man, at this point, I feel like we can really, like, build some dope. Yeah. Like, we can build some dope at this point. Right, and right, right. We was just kind of just sitting there just talking, like, about all these good ideas. And then we was just, like, just started, like, writing stuff down. And at that point, I was just like, all right, bro, I feel like we should really just do a partnership yeah. for the most part. And, I mean, as far as, like, the partnership, uh, it's basically, like, we just combining everything Um, as far as, like, my self-paced stuff, uh, even my instructor-led or even just career services to resumes. But the crazy thing about that is, that's not even like that's just really like low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit, yeah. <laughs> like you know, what the bare we minimum. really, yeah. what we really have kind of building out. I don't really give out too much. I'm not even gonna say anything about it for sure. the most part, just because I don't want nobody copying our sure, idea. Sure, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it, it's gonna be crazy though. It, it's really gonna make people getting jobs so much easier. Um, as far as in the tech industry, like it's gonna be a killer. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm. I don't want to give too much details either, but. <laughs> Just know we're 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 looking into the SaaS route, software as a service route, um, and we'll see what we come up with from there. We have a pretty good idea, um, but yeah, we'll like I said, we'll be back together on this show. And what I wanted to kind of do, um, you guys have that have kept up have seen us talking more so about like, um, you know, um, specialized fields. Like I spent the first few episodes talking about product management, but like this is a this is another iteration of the um, of the actual Tech Talk series where we'll come on and like kind of share our journey as we're building um, a product or building um, a business together. So that's something that I think you guys will take a lot away from, especially if you're looking to get into tech, because we're not only helping people find jobs in tech as like our passing, but we're also building that, like not just building a business, but I actually mean building technology to do it. So um, for those that are interested, whether you, whether you're looking into just finding a tech career or something specialized, like you want to be a dev or you're looking at product management, you know, you'll get a lot of different looks and feels just from some of the conversations that we're going to be having and sharing with you guys along um, our journey. So I thought that'd be really important for us to just share. And, um, you know, here we are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty excited, man. So um, do you have anything you want to leave people with? Any takeaway messages? Anything that you want people to know about Get Me In Tech or anything like that? Yeah, so one thing, uh, this is just like life like life advice in general. Um, cause again, I'm on social media a lot. And I see a lot of people, um, they feel like just because someone is doing something in particular and they're not 
pretty much there at that point, bro, everyone's time is right on time. Like, just because someone, they're probably making a certain amount of money at a certain age, like, you never really know how much work they actually put in to get there. So don't compare your your beginning to somebody in. Like, that's that's the quickest way to just put yourself in, like, in a real depression state and mm-hmm. just really feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Like, I see that a lot. Um, I actually did that a lot when I first kind of started off sure. the entrepreneurship journey. I'm just like, dang, like, how is this person doing this? How's... And then I, I just, like, realized, like, I, I got to stop doing it. I got to take a step back and just kind of focus on my own thing. Once you just really start running your own race, like, the sky's the limit. Everything mm-hmm. becomes so much more clear. You not even become potential number one but yourself. Like, mm-hmm. never do that. Because <laughs> it's a shame for you to be losing the competition that they didn't even know that was in with you. So, I'm just saying sure. like that. Um, as far as like anything else, I mean, again, you guys follow me on social media. All my social media stay on tech. My Instagram is stay on tech.io. Um, I pretty much like always giving out content, um, where me talking about the tech industry or even me even talking about financial literacy or investing tips or all of those great things. So, um, yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, well, cool. So, um, you guys have his information getmeintech.com. If you're looking for career services, you can actually go to Get Me In Tech, sign up for his course, and you'll get a free service through Figures. Uh, so if you guys are looking for those career services, but also looking for a way into tech, that's your best way at the moment. So please check us out, and we'll be back on the next episode.